All right, see, look now. We're gonna take over. I'm a big man. I'm the person that he really learned from. How would you describe your relationship with your mom? My mom? Yeah. Uh, oh, my mom was great. Uh, been at the least since day one. Supported me in every way from school to basketball, whatever else. I grew up with my mom's career, so my relationship with my mom was really good. My mom worked in the so that's why I grew up in the party. Which of these trophies did you contribute to? A lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of them. <laughs> I used to get protested all the time. <laughs> Why? Just like birth certificate type stuff? Or I like... used to think I was older than I was, oh, so well. they used to protest. But I, I was like one of the youngest guys on the team. Don't oh, call me right here. Too. Like the best. Uh, super young. I think this the, is the trophy for that. I think this is like the inner city basketball. Uh, baseball stuff. Uh, I think it's some volleyball stuff up here. Everything. You played volleyball? Volleyball, flag, football, everything. Had to. In order to play basketball, you had to play every sport. Hey. How you doing? All right. Hey. Hey. Most intelligent students I had, he was the highest scoring. I want a couple bites. He won. Benton was kind of quiet to himself. Um, very mannerable, very mannerable student. Um, had great potential. Um, very respectful. Um, I figured he would make it. This is the third year I was here. You don't see you? Yeah, I see you. <laughs> yeah. Our kids, they need something. They need some type of element. Um, what they see if somebody from the neighborhood doing something positive. Hi. <laughs> you want a orange? Oh, I thought you were supposed to stay nutrition. <laughs> hey, see you. Nice meeting you again. Thanks for signing. It's still, it's still kind of funny to me to uh, know that like, people look at me like that because I don't look at myself as like a uh, big time professional basketball player. Because we lack positive role models in this neighborhood. I know. So, <laughs> you already know how it is. It's probably like top five, top three, top five first neighborhoods in Chicago. Came from football. It was my first year actually playing real football. And, uh, it happened right here in the park. I think I was still in elementary school, but I remember playing on a court out here, and some guys playing like uh, over there, away from the court. He was on the court playing basketball. I was in the park, and I said, "You know, I see some guys arguing." When I seen guys arguing, I say, "I hear one of them say, man, you swing, I'm gonna knock your shit off.'" Growing up out here is kind of like it's like a numbing effect when it comes to like violence and stuff like that, because you see it and you get used to it. I'm young at the time. I didn't know really what was going on, so I'm like, you know what? Let me let me go ahead and get on. I got a bad feeling as I was walking off. The shots went off, and when the shots went off, I started running. Everybody that was on the court had to be about 100 people outside. We were at my house, and when we got to my house, they told me that like your little brother got shot. Next thing you know, I made it to like the middle of the field. My neck was wet. Come find out, I was shot. So I live right here on the third floor. That's how I saw. For me, it was easy to come out anytime I wanted and walk across the street to the court. So I spent most of my times like living right here. I really had no curfew to when I could come off the court. And so I came out here early in the morning. It was out here late at night until the lights cut off. Wait until the bench. You were drafted. So what do you remember when you got a taste of the NBA? when you were on the two-way with Brooklyn. What are some of your favorite memories from that? Uh, one of my first points, uh, getting a chance just to guard and be on the court with people I watched growing up that I kind of idolized. I remember um, guarding Rondo for a little bit. Um, I think him like probably being like the the one I remember the most is because I remember watching him when he was on the Boston hmm. team and I remember sitting in the living room when they was playing the Bulls in the playoffs and just talking about that. So when I got on the court, him, it was like 
Let's just watch what I'm this gonna leave. What's the best part about the G League and what's the toughest aspect about the G League? The best part is playing at home and being just close to the, the NBA, knowing you one step away from the opportunity that could change your life. But the worst part is the things like not getting paid that much to stay home. So it's like picking your poison. So I, mean, I think it's a lot of guys like me and the G League whose numbers and stats and games and at NBA level, yeah, they're playing on the NBA team, but I think the opportunity just hasn't presented itself. Sometimes it could be from injury or from a team or whatever, but I think like, it's just based off opportunity, and I've seen guys do it, like seen Spencer do it, uh, one of my friends I grew up with, Alfonso McKinney, I've seen him go from not having college offers to play in the finals with the Warriors, so I think it's all about opportunity. How do you do with the cut, Milt? How are you feeling about the cut? Good, always good.